Welcome to this first episode in a series called Brain Bit by Bit, in which I will look at brain images and tell something about it. The human brain and mind are fascinating and studied by thousands of neurologists, psychologists, neuroscientists and other professionals around the world. My name is Christiane and I work as a neuroradiologist. I finished my training in 2009. When I got a mental illness myself, I noticed that there was not much overlap in how the different professionals look at the brain and I also noticed that most people think that a mental illness is different from a neurological illness whereas I think there's a lot of analogy and I hope that by telling what I know about the brain, we can also understand the mind a little bit more. When I looked on Pinterest at images of the brain by psychologists, I found this very colorful image. And I thought, if you imagine the brain it's really colorful, but if we as radiologists image the brain, it's grayish and black and white. This series is intended for healthcare professionals and medical students. And if you are watching this and are a radiologist or resident, you can stop now because I'm going to highlight some basic MRI sequences that I will be showing in the next vlogs. The MRI is a big magnet and if you put the patient in you give energy to the protons and then you receive it back and by timing the giving and receiving of the energy to the protons you can make different kind of images. In a T2 weighted image the water is bright and a T2 weighted image is very useful in the brain because the majority of brain diseases gives edema, so bright signal on the T2 weighted image. So demyelination, encephalitis, a brain tumor or a brain infarction are all bright on T2. The second sequence that's useful is the flare sequence, which is a T2 weighted sequence with suppression of the CSF. So the cerebrospinal fluid in the ventricles and subarachnoid space is black, whereas true edema remains bright. So you can use the flare to check if you have high signal on the T2 weighted image, if it's true pathology or something that's not worrisome. In this patient, there is a lot of white matter abnormality on the T2-weighted image, also high on flare, so this is a case of demyelination. Whereas on this T2-weighted image, the high signal at the level of the basal ganglia is black on flare image, so these are enlarged perivascular spaces, normal finding. The third sequence is the T1 weighted sequence that is also used pre and post contrast. And on the T1 weighted sequence, the CSF is black and blood, protein, and fat are bright. To make the distinction with a flare image, you can look at the white matter because myelin is fatty, so if it's a little bit bright, it's a T1 weighted image. And on a T1 weighted image, you see what you would also see macroscopically. So tumor or an infarction you see on the T1 weighted image, whereas things that you only see microscopically are usually not visible on the T1 weighted image, like demyelination. And the last sequence I want 
to mention is the inversion recovery sequence in which you give an inversion pulse before the other pulses so the air is grayish and on the inversion recovery sequence you can optimize the contrast between white matter and gray matter and you can also see the difference between the gray matter structures so the caudate and putamen resemble the cortex and our telencephalon whereas the thalamus and globus pallidus are diencephalon so four grayish sequences t2 flare t1 and inversion recovery and don't worry i will also use dti and fmri every now and then to add some color thanks for watching and until next time